You can't get a scholarship without this one habit. This is the Athletic Scholarship Podcast, episode number 156. Now that I got your attention, you're wondering what that one habit is. And hello, I'm John Fugu, your athletic scholarship coach. I'm also the CEO of Recruit Me. I'm a podcaster, of course, an author and speaker. And uh, so glad to have you along in this 156th episode of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. One habit we're going to talk about that you need to have if you expect to get an athletic scholarship. And uh, we're going to dig in in this summer recruiting series. Now, I picked this time to go through this topic because I know that at this time of the year, it could be hard to apply it. And at the same time, I know that we're heading into the fall, so it is kind of like a new year. Uh, Turn over a new leaf, new habits, and getting into doing those things you know are important. So there's a freshness when we hit the fall and the new school year. And we're going to talk about one habit that you need to have in order to get an athletic scholarship. Hey, I want to let you know about my book, The Athletic Scholarship Playbook. It's a great summer book for you to read in these final weeks of summer. It's a complete college recruiting roadmap for high school athletes and parents. You can get it on Amazon. It's also the sponsor of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. I'll tell you more about some things I want you to have that will uh, equip you in uh, your walk and journey towards an athletic scholarship. But let's get into today's topic. I, you may remember me saying this, uh, it would have been several months ago, that uh, my football coach in high school used to tell us over and over again, he had great one-liners, he had great sayings, and this is one I will never forget because it applies to all of life. He said, if you take care of the little things, the big things will turn out all right. If you take care of the little things, the big things will turn out all right. That made a whole lot of sense to me because I was an offensive and defensive tackle in high school, especially on the offensive side. If I took care of the guy in front of me and blocked the man in front of me, and if the guard uh, on my left blocked his man in front of him, and uh, if the tight end on the right would block his man on the end uh, and that side, then together we would have that side of the line covered. The runner running back could just fly through because we each took care of our lane. We took care of the little things. Going even smaller than that, if I get off the dime quickly and block my man and beat my man off the blocks, then I win that play, taking care of that little thing. Going even further, narrowing it down even further, if I'm in the right stance and I'm ready to burst out so I can be the first off the line, so I can hit my man, so I can push him back, so I can take care of my lane, <laughs> then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win that play big time. Taking care of the little things. Going back even further, even more narrow than that, If in practice that week I had really worked my tail off getting off the line and blocking my man, I would be prepared for the game, taking care of the little things. I could narrow down further and further. But the point is this. Our coach said, if you take care of the little things, the big things will turn out all right. If we as linemen took care of the men in front of us, if we took care of our lane, we're going to move down the field. The running back's going to go through the hole. The quarterback is going to be protected when when he passes. We're going to score touchdowns. We're going to win the game. The big things. Little things, when you do those, the big things will turn out all right. So my habit that I want to share with you as we're into the uh, closing weeks of summer is this. Take care of the little things. Take care of the little things. And you'll have a much better shot at getting a scholarship. If you don't take care of the little things, you're not going to get a scholarship unless you are so gifted that uh, (laughs) that coaches are just are lining up to sign you. But in most cases, that's not going to happen. I want you to take care of the little things. What does that mean when it comes to athletic scholarships? Let me give you some specifics. Um, The little things as far as getting on a coach's radar, first of all, 
Do you have your list of schools? And are you continuing to update that list? Are you keeping it fresh? That's the little things. you got to have a pool of resources, a pool of schools to go to to be able to put yourself in front of. That's the big thing, putting yourself in front of schools and coaches. The little thing is keeping that list updated, keeping it fresh. Another little thing, are you making contact with coaches consistently? It's not just a one and done. Are you going after these schools in a, over and over again? Are you being persistent? Are you getting off the dime over and over again? When they're not responding, you're making a second try. You're making a third try. That's, that's taking care of the little things. Another one. When a coach contacts you, are you responding quickly, promptly? If a coach is emailing you or texting you, are you responding quickly? Or are you letting it ride and you're saying, well, I'll get to it. Taking care of the little things. You do that. You're going to open doors. And when you open doors, that's what leads to an athletic scholarship. That's a little thing that you need to take care of. Another little thing as you put yourself out there to coaches. Do you have your resume completed? And are you updating it as things change? Do you have the best headline in that resume, that player profile, that will get the attention of college coaches? That the four or five words that when that coach sees your resume, sees your player profile, he or she is going to take a look at it and read further. In that player profile, in that resume, do you have your best picture? Uh, Do you present yourself well? Uh, Do you have the right stats in there? Are you highlighting the things that you do well? Take a look at that resume, that player profile, line by line, and see if it presents you well. Yes, you want to be accurate, you want to be truthful, but you want to present yourself well. You have a lot to tell, coaches, if you are a talented athlete, and you want to make sure that it says that on your resume. If you need some, some tips on how to put a resume together, or whether yours looks right, I've got a free one for you. It's on my website. It's the uh, Recruiting Power Pack. There's three things in there, and one is a player profile or resume. It's a fillable form. I mean, it's, it's, it's the template. It's there for you. Go get it at recruitme.com, recruit-me.com. Uh, you can go online and look at other resumes that are out there, other player profiles for your sport, and see how it's done. I had a a parent write to me just uh, yesterday. I got an email uh, asking me about uh, the player profile for uh, his athlete, his his daughter, wondering if um, uh, what it should include uh, because my sample in my book and also uh, that you'll get online is for baseball. But asking about the, the sport his daughter uh, plays. And I saw what you want to do is go ahead online and look at others and compare that. There's others out there. And if they look good to you, man, make yours as good as that. That's taking care of the little things. Moving down the road, how about uh, keeping coaches updated? You may have a couple years ahead of you of doing this, and you could get weary. You could get tired of this. But, man, you got to take care of that. That's the little things. Uh, Sending out your SAT scores, your ACT scores, uh, your stats at the end of the year, your schedule for the upcoming year, um, your your grades, um, all these things that you can do on an ongoing basis to let a coach know you're still interested, those touch points. Are you taking care of those little things? Or are you getting bored sending them out after a year that kind of gets old, gets old? However, if you take care of the little things, continue to send out those updates, the big things will turn out all right. Do you have a scorecard, a report card, as I call it, for the schools that are in the final, uh, maybe the final five of the schools that you're looking at? You're coming down to the end of your, uh, your high school career, and you are coming down to the end of making that choice, coming down to the finish line. How are you going to keep one school uh in comparison to another and do it accurately, well, you keep a scorecard. It's a grid where you're ranking like an A through F or a one to five different elements of the program, the school, the academics, the athletics, the coaching staff, uh, the cost, all those things that you want to have 
an objective look at, you can only do that when you have a grid I call a report card. So you, you, you enter the information on those schools. It can, that can be tedious as well. However, however, those are the little things you need to do so that the big things will turn out all right. What are the little things that you need to do as we come down to the last few weeks of the summer? Off the top of your head, what are some things that have been in the back of your mind or things that you've been putting off that you know you need to do, you need to get done? Uh, if you're the athlete, uh, grab your parents, say, let's do this together. Parents, maybe you're a little ticked off at your son or daughter because they haven't done anything this summer or they haven't done the things they need to do in order to keep this recruiting thing going and you're a little bit upset and impatient. Well, come alongside and do it together, work together as a team. But what are those two or three little things that you can do in the next week that will push your recruiting experience further? Get that journey down the road. And as we come up to fall, maybe there'll be a new energy, and this will be the first step to uh, giving you that new energy. So that's my lesson. That's my lesson this week. Take care of the little things. Make that a habit. A habit is something that lasts a long time. It becomes ingrained in us. And as long as you're pursuing the scholarship, you've got to have the habit of taking care of the little things. Hey, do you have a question? I'd love to answer your question. Uh, I had a couple really good questions this week. I was able to uh, respond personally to parents too, and I might use your question on the show as well. But if you have a question, go ahead and email me at john, J-O-N, at recruit-me.com, john at recruitme.com. Also, remember to go ahead and get your player profile if you haven't yet, along with the other two things that are part of the Recruiting Power Pack on my website, right on the homepage at recruit-me.com, recruitme.com. And while you're there, go ahead and check out Recruit Me 3.0. It could be the tool that you need to set you off in the right direction, get you a good start this fall. Well, that's it for now. I've gone over time, I think, in the last two weeks. Uh, <laughs> and this week, I give you a couple extra minutes back, okay? So, uh, by the way, last week I talked about confronting your upper limit challenge. I noticed I haven't had as many downloads on that. If you, I know it's summer, but if you haven't listened to that, please go ahead, go ahead and listen to that. You need to hear it. Confronting your upper limit challenge and episode 154, the week before that, Halftime Secrets for Summer Recruiting. And that's it for this week. God bless you. Talk to you again next week.